This tutorial steps through the actions necessary to quickly get a simple flat 2D slope model to solution. Note that this tutorial can be done using the demonstration version of flak 2 d To begin with, start flak 2 d and click the New Project button. Type in the file name First Slope. Click on the Content Selector drop-down menu, then select New and Sketch Set. Name the Sketch Set First Slope. At this point, the set is empty. This is where you can draw or import the model geometry and automatically generate the mesh. You could easily import a 2D DXF to define the model geometry, but for this tutorial, let's draw it manually using the built-in tools. From the Draw Tool menu, click on the Points and Edges drop-down tool and choose the Corner to Corner tool. Use the tool to select the first corner to define the model geometry at 0, 0. Then select the second corner at 60, 30. Now, to draw the slope wall, select the Polyline Drawing tool and start the polyline at point 0, 10. Next, point 20, 10. And finally, point 40, 30. Click the right mouse button to exit the polyline mode. Note the red X symbols along the edges. These indicate the resolution of the model based on the default target settings of four zones along each edge. If you click the Mesh All Blocks tool, a mesh will be automatically generated. While this is a perfectly valid mesh, it will be too coarse to provide meaningful results. So, let's try this again after modifying some settings. Use the Broom tool and clean up meshes to remove this current mesh. Use the Auto Size All Edges Slash Blocks tool under the Mesh All Blocks tool. Set the Zone Size target to be 1 unit length. Note that there are many more X symbols along all the edges. At this point, group names could be assigned to the edges or points. Groups are labels that make it easy to identify and target sets of objects. Click the Mesh All Blocks tool. This is now a much more appropriate mesh resolution. Each contiguous set of zones makes up two blocks. Block 1 is the material to be excavated, while block 2 is the slope which remains. Group names could be assigned to either block of zones. Lastly, click the Create Zones tools to generate the model. Generating the model brings you to the model pane. Here, constitutive models, properties, and groups can be assigned interactively. Let's start by assigning group names to the excavation and the slope. Groups are labels that make it easy to identify and target sets of objects. Group slots are a useful way to categorize groups. For example, a slot called Materials could contain several groups representing different layers of soil, soil A, soil B, and soil C. The same zones may also be assigned to a different slot called Construction with different groups representing zones to be excavated and zones that make up the slope. To begin, click on the zones to be excavated. Then click the Assign drop-down menu and select Assign a group. Keep the slot as default and enter PIT for the group name. Click OK. Repeat this for the second block, assigning it to the group, Slope. Now, let's assign the constitutive model. Select the entire model using Ctrl plus A or click on one block of zones, hold the Ctrl key and select the other. The entire model should now be highlighted. Click the Assign drop-down menu and select Assign a Constitutive Model. Click the Standard drop-down menu and choose More Coulomb. Click the Assign button. Next, from the Assign drop-down menu, select Set Model Properties. Fill in the properties, Density equals 2000. Young's Modulus equals 1 times 10 to the power of 7. Poisson's ratio equals 0 0.25. Cohesion equals 10,000. And friction equals 35 degrees. Click the Save Changes button. Note, you do not generally specify units in Itasca software. The programs accept any consistent set of engineering units. For example, length in meters, force in newtons, stress in pascals, and density in kilograms per cubic meter. 
using pounds per square inch for for stress and kilograms per cubic meter for density would be inappropriate. Another useful tool in the model pane is being able to skin the model, that is, to automatically assign group names to zone faces or edges. For this model, if we click ignore any existing group names, the boundaries will be automatically labeled as top, bottom, west, and east. This will make assigning boundary conditions much simpler later on. Now is a good point to save your project and the model state. Note that sketch sets and properties, for example, are saved as part of the model state. To do this, click on File in the main menu and select Save Project. If the model state has not been saved, you will be prompted to do so when you save the project. Click Yes and name the saved state Mesh. Further modeling steps will require directly entering commands in a data file. Flak 2D models are entirely command-driven, although, some commands may be automatically generated by user interaction with the UI. To create a new data file in the text editor, go to the content selector, currently labeled, model, and select new, then data file. Name you data file first slope, and click the new button. Typically, the first line of the main data file is model new. This command clears any model state information, allowing one to begin a new problem. Next, type model restore mesh to restore the model state containing the model geometry and other information. The constitutive model and properties we assigned in the model pane are also part of the save state file. We now need to assign the boundary conditions for the model. In this case, the model will have roller boundaries on the sides and the bottom will be fixed. The top will be left free. Boundary conditions are typically assigned using the zone face apply command. And roller boundaries are created using the velocity normal boundary condition. A fixed boundary can be simulated by setting both X and Y components of velocity to zero. The range keyword specifies the boundaries to apply these conditions to. For example, position X equals zero represents all grid points along the left side of the model. Position X equals 60 are grid points along the right side of the model and position y equals zero are all grid points along the base of the model. Next, it is necessary to assign initial conditions, such as the model's pre-excavation stress field. For this simple case, stresses are only due to gravity, so gravity is assigned using the model gravity command. Stresses due to gravity are initialized with the zone initialize stresses command, which approximates the stresses based on the weight of material above each zone. Solving the model is necessary to reach complete equilibrium. Prior to solving, the program needs to know if the model will use large or small strain calculations. To solve the model using default settings, use the command model solve. Use the green arrow icon to execute the data file. At this point, save the current model state as initial. In a larger FLAC 2D project, it would be practical to start a new data file with model restore initial so the investigation could continue without having to repeatedly create an initial equilibrium state. However, this example is relatively small and runs quickly, so we will continue model construction in this data file. The next step is to excavate the slope. This could be done by immediately removing the zones either by changing the excavated zones to the null constitutive model or by deleting the zones. However, it is better practice to excavate the zones gradually, so artificial, numerical effects do not exaggerate the failure as a result of excavation. This can be done using the command zone relax excavate. This command only sets the relax condition and the model needs to be solved again.
Once the model has reached equilibrium, save this model state as excavation. At this point, let's plot some model results. Split the tile, right. Create a new plot called displacements. Add a zone plot item and color by contours. Magnitudes of displacements will show by default. Now, let's add some displacement vectors to get a sense of the direction of movement. Change the scale attributes for the vectors to make them more visible. They can also be colored by magnitude and plotted only along boundaries. Next, split this tile below and add another new plot called State. Again, add a zone plot item. Keep the color by as label, but change the label to state. The will display the type and extent of failure, if any. You can see that there has been shear failure in the past, green zones denoted by shear P, and tension failure in the past, red zones denoted by tension P, but there is no current failure and the slope is stable. Finally, let's run a factor of safety analysis for this slope. This is done easily using the command model factor of safety. Rather than rerunning the model from the start, note that you may execute one or more commands or lines of scripting. In the text editor, highlight and right click on the text you want to run. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl Shift E. The factor of safety calculation is based upon the strength reduction method, which progressively reduces the shear strength of the material to bring the slope to a state of limiting equilibrium using a bracketing approach. When it is finished, you will see that three new save states have been created. The first is the initial state, the second is just stable, and the third is just failing. The factor of safety value is displayed in the command console output and is 1.15. Let's look at the failed slope results by loading the unstable saved state. Do this by double-clicking on FOS Unstable. Let's adjust the displacement vector scale, trying automatic first and then 0.1. Uncheck by magnitude so it's easier to see the vectors. After excavating the slope originally, all the vectors pointed away from the slope surface, indicating rebound. In this case, with reduced material strength, we see clear indications of slope mobilization. In the state plot, substantially more failure is indicated, including now, as denoted by dash n in the legend. For this case, let's look at the value for cohesion. Hide the state plot item and add a second zone plot item using color by label and selecting the property cohesion. The cohesion needed to be reduced from 10,000 down to 8,678 and friction from 35 degrees to 31.3 degrees for the slope to become unstable. You can also display the factor of safety in any plot by adding the factor of safety plot item. To move this to the top of the legend, simply drag the plot item to the top of the plot item list. And finally, if you prefer decimals rather than scientific notation in a plot items legend, you can adjust this under its legend attributes under contours. Be sure to save your project before closing the program. This concludes this tutorial.